Now, what you may be challenged with at your first million will be different than what, you know, when you reach your 30th million, but new level, new devil never goes away. Every time you stretch, things will come up. Your ego will pipe up. Imposter syndrome might pop up. Resistance, which is part of the human condition will pop up. That's all very normal. Hello, Profit First entrepreneurs and thought leaders. I am so excited today. We have a special guest. We have Ms. Kelly Ruda herself. Now, Kelly is a Jersey girl, but she is making it in the South. So she is a, totally living in the South of North Carolina right now. And Kelly's background is she's a seasoned psychotherapist. She's a seasoned psychotherapist who has turned speaker, mentor, and coach that specializes in working with these audacious change agents who want to disrupt their status quo so that everyone benefits. Now, Kelly is the most outgoing introvert that you will ever meet. She is a lover of chocolate and wine, and she's obsessed with anything related to the beach. And what Kelly's mission is, is she is on a mission to teach women to be disruptive and to teach them how to shine like the supernovas that they really are in order to create massive impact in the world without apology. So please join me in welcoming Kelly Ruta to our platform. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Oh, I'm well, I'm so excited to be here. I'm so honored that you asked me to be on the show and I'm really excited to have this conversation. Well, I am excited to have you on our show too. I mean, for you guys out there that are listening, Kelly Ruta is actually, she was my coach. And like, I'm telling you, when I work with Kelly, I'm telling you this, this is the reason why this podcast exists. You know, I would not get on camera until I work with Kelly. I would not get on like Facebook live until I work with Kelly. And man, talk about someone that pushed you out into the pool. <laughs> that is Kelly. Oh, yeah. so we've got a real treat today being able to pick Kelly Rita's mind. And today we're going to talk about scaling your business and really the number one thing that you have to accomplish in order to scale your business. Whether you're at a six figure going to seven figures or seven figures going to eight figures. This is the one thing that you need in order to take your business to the next level. So thank you, Kelly, for joining us today. Thank you. Let's dive in and talk about that, that one thing, the mistake everybody <laughs> makes at one point or another on their journey, whether, like you said, whether you're at six, seven, eight, or sometimes even beyond, this is the biggest mistake I see entrepreneurs make when they're attempting to scale their business. And that mistake is investing 90% of your time, money, and energy into strategy and tactics instead of into your mindset development and mastery. I'm big into mastery. I don't toe dip into anything. And the most successful entrepreneurs I know at all levels are obsessed with mastery. And this is the gap. This is the thing that I see the mistake over and over and over again is that there's this misunderstanding that it is primarily your strategy and tactics that drive your growth when really it's who you're being that drives what you're doing that drives your growth. And not enough people are strategically investing in that development in the way that they're, you know, investing in marketing and copy and, you know, Facebook ads and writing their book and getting their podcast going. All those things are wonderful and necessary. And I do all of them too. But when you do it without mastery over what you think, what you believe, how you manage your emotions, how you show up in the world, it's going to impact every decision you make in business. And so that's the huge mistake that I see far too many people make that causes a lot of struggle and slowing down of your success. I love that. You know, just, just how we're showing up in the world really dictates in terms of where we're going. And so Kelly, tell me about your journey with this. How, tell me how you discovered it and, and, and what does that look like mastering well, that? Yeah. Well, really, to be honest, what I have found, and I'll, I'll talk about my personal journey in just a second, because it's something that I speak very openly and honestly about, but really I stepped into this because I saw a, and was shocked by, to be honest, a huge gap, especially in the online entrepreneurial industry for mindset mastery. I saw a lot of people calling themselves mindset coaches. And when I looked at what they did, I thought to myself, 
oh my goodness, this is what people are paying thousands and thousands of dollars to do to learn how to write in a journal and think positive thoughts and make a vision board? No, 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 no. That is not, <laughs> that is not what actual transformational mindset work is. And so I saw a huge opportunity to serve people in a deeper way, in a more expert way, and in a more broad way, meaning that it's the work that I do is, is all encompassing. It's not just about learn how to think better. It's everything that is involved in showing up bigger, bolder, more courageous. And the way I landed here really is um, st started from an experience at the age of three. So I am part of the Me Too movement. I unfortunately was uh, molested at the age of three from about three to five. And it had a profound impact on my life. I ended up going on to be suicidal multiple times. I developed major depression, anorexia and bulimia, uh, complex PTSD, panic attacks, you name it, I developed it as the result of that abuse. And my memories were re repressed around the abuse for a very long time, but your body always knows. Your body has memory and it's separate from cognitive memory. So I had always known my whole life that something had gone terribly wrong. I knew that I had uh, suspected that it was sexual abuse, but I didn't actually begin to remember that abuse until about two and a half years ago when my mom died. And the reason that happened was because when I told my mom what I thought had happened to me, she did not believe me. She didn't believe me. So I knew, or some part of me, a deeper, wiser part of me knew, don't let those memories come back now because her mom is not going to be able to handle this. So when my mom passed, the memories came back. But really that along with multiple other traumas and challenges that happened throughout my young life and my early adult life led me to become a psychotherapist. The running joke in that community is you don't become a psychotherapist because you had some easy <laughs> piece of cakewalk life or childhood. Um, and I was drawn to service. I was really drawn to taking my traumas, my tragedies, my troubles, and turning them into something meaningful and something worthwhile that made a difference in the world. For me, leaving the world better than I found it is a really big internal driver. So I did that for about 20 years, Suzanne, and I loved it. It was wonderful, rewarding work. And I got to a point where I noticed that my clients were still getting amazing results, but I didn't feel like the work was giving back to me the same way that it used to. And so I just wasn't finding joy. And I also wasn't creating wealth either. I was getting by, I mean, we were fine, but I wanted more. I wanted more joy, more fulfillment. I wanted to touch more people's lives and I wanted to grow financial independence. And I made the decision to hire a business coach and I made a very, very quick leap into this industry and have been leaping ever since. That is amazing. That is so amazing. And and I love the point that you bring out too, that a lot of times our mindset, you know, a lot of us, we think we can't do something because it's, you know, it's just not working out or it's just bad things happening to us that's stopping us in the current moment. But when you peel the layers back, Kelly, one of the things that you're mentioning is a lot of times it's the things that happened to us when we were little. And, and you know, right now I'm writing this book, Profit First for Minority Business Enterprise, which by the way is launching 2021. So Yay, excited. And I by the way, wait. Kelly motivated me to write this book. <laughs> and, and, and one of the things about it, what is, and my discovery was a lot of the times what we deal with, especially as minority entrepreneurs, for you, all you guys out there that are minorities. And if you're not, you know, if you're a woman owned business or even a male owned business, right? Mm -hmm. th there's generational trauma DNA. There's things that we are, plant it with, you know, just like, you know, in, in the black community, you know, like, oh, don't trust white people. You know what I mean? You, you hear stories like Trayvon Martin, things like that, that think bad things happen. And so you have to, we call it like the other self, you know, put yeah. on the show when you're around people that don't look like you. And what happens is your personality gets repressed, right? And, and so you start to behave differently than what you would normally behave because of something bad that's happened to you, right? And, and Kelly, what you're saying is, you know, that trauma, you know, it, 
it, it affected how you show up in the world. Right. And, and for entrepreneurs, maybe, you know, I know one of the things I struggle with Kelly that you helped me with was I was bullied by my team. Right. I was trying mm-hmm. to make everybody happy, the clients, happy team, happy to the point that I didn't make myself happy. And I literally right. one day turned around and go, just like you, why are we doing this? What is the purpose of this anyway? And because everybody else was happy except for me. And, and I love how you bring out, you know, it's what you, it's, a, it's a lot of times how we're behaving isn't really what's on the surface or what we can understand or what we can even see right now, because you may not understand it. Like you said, from two years ago, right? Two years ago, yes. when you started to understand that. Yes. And you know, one of the things I teach and talk about with my clients that I wish I was hearing more coaches talk about with their clients is the impact of generational and cultural and familial meaning, you know, coming from your nuclear family, either traumas or cycles, because there are some of your listeners who are very fortunate enough to say, I don't have trauma in my history, which, oh, wonderful. So good because the, the numbers of people with trauma in their lives, are, the, the statistics are huge and frightening. But even if you weren't traumatized by something that happened because you grew up black by something that happened because you grew up getting messages from generation after generation after generation that drove scarcity and lack mindset or, or your family, you know, traumatized you in some way, you definitely got messages that create have created cycles for you. You may not realize it. And, you know, people who loved you didn't intend to do that to you. They simply did not know better. And that's why I am so excited about being alive and doing this work at at this time in history, because I do know better and I can teach you to know and do better in a way that we didn't really have a lot of access to before. And this is going to make all the difference in the world when skilled people can guide other people through those traumas and through breaking those cycles, because it directly impacts how you show up as a leader as an entrepreneur, as a service provider. And it also impacts how you show up in your own personal life as a spouse, a partner, a parent, a sister, a friend. And so these things are are incredibly important, but they're very hard things to talk about. And I'm really a firm believer in expertise is required in this area. This is not something that you just go get you know, a six month coaching certification and then come out saying you're an expert because trauma is no joke. It is no joke. And if you do not do expert work with people, you can reactivate or re-traumatize them. And there's extra work for people like myself to do in order to be able to work with people of color, because I've not walked a day in your shoes and I never, ever will. And I need to have extra education and training in order to be able to guide you properly because people of color's experience is, is unique to them. And I have to be able to be very well educated to guide you through that. Right. And, and, you know, and it's just so interesting too, because, you know, I mean, I know for me, you know, when I was working with you, Kelly, because we worked together for a year, you know, just not even realizing what, you know, I was like, I don't really have a trauma or Mm -hmm. thing that I can remember. And, and it's going back to the stories, the stories of that my parents told me, you know, the, the stories that their grandparents told them and the stories of their great grandparents all the way back to like slavery, you know, and all sure. this was like stories I was bringing forward in terms of how I showed up in the world. So it's amazing. And like, even if some people, you know, they have like wealth, wealth stories, right? Stories yes. that are like not, you know, not having enough money and that being passed down or, or, you know, or being good stewards, you know, all these stories get passed down and become a, who we are really and how we can trust those around us. Absolutely. So Kelly, I know you've got some tricks and tips in your bag in terms of like, how can we start to really uncover who we are and really to create the mindset that we need in order to be able to take our businesses to the next level? So there's a few very simple things that are great places to start. So number one is to return to the Pareto principle, which we all know in terms of strategy and tactics. So where is 80% of your results coming from? And what's that 20% of work? And this is not work on your business. This is work on yourself that you're doing that's driving 80% of your results. What you may be very surprised to find 
is that the 80% of your results are kind of negative. In other words, you have self-doubt, you lack confidence, you are highly critical or perfectionistic, you try to control yourself, your teams, your clients, rather than be in command and lead your business and lead your clients. So that's a really good first indicator that most entrepreneurs, there are we're already familiar with that principle, but we tend to apply it towards really the tactics in our business and not think about it from, you know, in terms of mindset. So some of you may not even be actively working on yourself in this way. That right there is a red flag. It's a red flag because this is non-negotiable work at every level of revenue, every level of revenue, whether you're at 50 million or you're, you know, approaching your first million, it makes no difference because the new level, new devil experience never, ever goes away. Now, what you may be challenged with at your first million will be different than what, you know, when you reach your 30th million, but new level, new devil never goes away. Every time you stretch, things will come up. Your ego will pipe up. Imposter syndrome might pop up. Resistance, which is part of the human condition will pop up. That's all very normal which is why if you look at the 80-20 principle and you apply it to the work you're doing on yourself, you may be very, very, it may be very eye-opening, let's put it that way. And you may very quickly realize that you're not putting in the work on yourself to yield the confidence, the steadiness, the resilience. Oh my gosh, if this year has taught us anything, it's that making consistent deposits in your resilience account is as important as depositing into your profit (laughs) account. And that's work we have to be doing all the time. So that's one or two things right there. Secondly, you've got to understand that if you're scaling, and I'm assuming all of you who are listening are actively scaling, it is going to require a new level of leadership from you. Because when you scale, you're doing less of the doing in the business, and you're really in a space of the being and the leading in the business, which can be quite an uncomfortable shift if you're really used to just being that go-getter, hard worker, work yourself to the bone, work 80-hour weeks, do all the things. And I appreciate your work ethic. And I appreciate your willingness to get done anything that needs to be done. However, that can be a trap as well, because you cannot scale with ease if you are not willing to step out of the doing and into the leading. And so the question you have to be asking yourself is, what do I need to cultivate within my thoughts, the way I manage my emotions and the way I make my decisions so that I lead in a more empowered and impactful way? Because if you're used to being, you know, the hustling doer, get it done, that's going to be your default. That's what you're going to want to go back to all the time. And then you just create this experience of micromanaging people. And nobody likes to be micromanaged. It's awful. It's an awful experience. So that's another thing. And then finally, this idea of investing in yourself as an investment in the growth and scaling of your business. And I don't just mean your revenue and your profit. I mean the impact also that you're making on the world and the legacy you're leaving behind by doing really good work in the world with and for people. That requires investment in yourself, not just investment in your strategy, in your marketing, in your sales, in your offers. It's an investment you have to make in yourself over and over and over again. I I was laughing. I spoke at an event earlier uh, today and somebody, I did a little Q&A session and somebody said to me, Kelly, I'm already at seven figures and I'm ready to go to multiple seven figures and th- all of this old stuff is coming up again. What, what, is, what is that? What is wrong with me? That question right there is going to drag you down. There's nothing wrong with you. What you all have to accept is that while you have your own unique genius, you are here with purpose, you are still a human being. 
And you can, even though you are all divine in your own right, you are not going to escape the human condition or the human experience, which means you have to learn how to master being a human being, dealing with your resistance, dealing with your doubt when it gets triggered, dealing with your triggers, dealing with, you know, shame dealing with old things that come up because look, we all know I'm preaching to the choir here. We all know that growing a business will press every button you have and all the ones you didn't even know were there. (laughs) So you have to really invest in yourself with the same consistency and commitment that you invest in your business. When you do that, you become totally unstoppable. I love that. I I absolutely love that. You know, I I love how you apply the Pareto principle, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, if you guys are not familiar with the 80, 20 rule Mm -hmm. and, and what Pareto tells us that we're going to spend 80% of our resources, energy, love, passion, time, life on just 20% of our bottom line or results. Mm -hmm. And I know when I was working with Kelly, you know, one of the big things that she did was, and I know I talked about it earlier was getting comfortable showing up getting comfortable showing up in your authentic self and mm-hmm. being able to tell your story. And, and I remember like she challenged us. She goes, you know what? I, every week, this is your homework and you're going to get on Facebook live and you're going to share your story and how it's impacting you. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was scared to death of it. And, but it ended up being now that I look back, one of the biggest life-changing events for me, and it really flipped the script for me. And that, that was where I needed to be spending my effort to 20% learning to show up and my authentic self, learning to tell my story, because, you know, that's how we're talking today. That's exactly how we're talking today. That was it. And, but I would have known that because, you know, it took me 42 years to even get to the point that I was missing the 20%, you know, and it, was, it took literally working with Kelly to realize that, you know, and be able to draw that back and look at that. And, and that's the great thing about working with an experienced coach like Kelly is that, you know, you guys are watching this podcast. You guys are type A people. You are achievers. You are doers. You are, you know, if you're growing a seven figure business, you're here because you didn't get here by luck. You know, it's, it's a combination of great blessings and effort. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, you you know, me, my dad's Chinese, my mother's African-American, you know, and, and I grew up in a do, do, do culture, right? You do, 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 do until you achieve to get where you go. You earn your place at the table, right? Because, you know, growing up, my parents always taught me, you know, you, you, you're a woman of color. You're going to have to work three and a half times harder than anybody else just to be sat so they, we'll sit at a table and be considered equal. That's mm-hmm. just the reality you'll have to face. And so I was a, this is a story that they were told. This is a story that their parents told them. And that was the, the legacy that was passed to me. And so I was a do, do, do girl. If you want to get something done, I will do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that made it hard for leadership. It made it hard for leadership because then I was like unable to really, you know, I was so caught up in doing that I didn't know how to really lead, right? Because I had to be front and center. I had to do the work. And it was Kelly saying, you know what, wait a minute. Where's your, where's your, where's your 20%? Where's your 20%? It's, it's learning to pick the right people, Mm -hmm. motivate them, allow them to shine. That's your 20%. And motivation is being able to tell your story and relate. Yes. Yes. And as a woman of color, I have to say to you, one of the things that makes me the most proud to know you is that you've decided to show up all the time. And when people show up all the time, what happens is you not only create a new normal for yourself. In other words, you say, oh, this is just what I do now. I show up all the time and I speak my truth. I show up all the time and I speak my truth. So what used to feel crazy is now your new normal, which is fabulous. But the other thing, and especially in marginalized communities, why this is so important is that for our brains and our minds, it's so much easier to see possibility when we see someone who looks like us, sounds like us, speaks like us, has a story like us. And I think that's true for everyone, but it's especially true in communities with marginalized people. And so seeing you as a woman of color, step up, speak out, lead, run a very successful business, that's going to allow young women of color or even older women of color who just thought, "Ah, I just never even considered this as a possibility for me to make it easier to see. They see you and they hear your story 
that has struggles and triumphs and challenges and all sorts of things. And they can see themselves in you. And then it makes it easier for their brain to say, oh, maybe me too. Maybe that's available to me too. And that's one, I'm proud of you for so many reasons, but that right there, because it has such a ripple effect, it's just huge. It's huge. And I want to just close by adding, look, we're all past the experience of business being transactional. Nobody wants it to be transactional. Nobody wants to feel like a sale, a number, the contributor to somebody owning a yacht. Nobody wants to feel like that. Mark Zuckerberg Zucker makes Facebook ads. <laughs> right, right. Nobody, and, and look, no props to you if you have a yacht. That's not the point. But you know, nobody wants to feel when they work with a service provider like a transaction. And one of the ways we start to create better relationships with our communities and, and people we don't even know yet or work with yet is by telling our story, but not telling it from the space of being a mess, from the space of being real, honest, and saying, I turned a tragedy or a trauma or a tribulation of some sort into an absolute triumph. And that is really important that people see it wasn't, I'm not an overnight success and I, it's not, I don't have a silver spoon in my mouth and that's how I got here. Or it's, I really did the work on myself to be able to show up not as a victim or not with, oh, this has to be hard all the time. It's hard enough. Let's not make it harder. Right. So enough with the transactional stuff, start showing up and just speaking your truth and your people will be drawn to you. It's impossible not to be because we are hardwired as humans for story. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and, you know, and what I found too, is, you know, just with the challenge of being able to share your story and then I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys, it wasn't easy to share my story, right? Never is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up, just like you guys, you know, my parents taught me, don't talk to strangers. Don't, don't, don't post anything on social media. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be loud. You don't want to be, you know, stay quiet, stay quiet and stay unseen. You know, that, that was the training that I had growing up as, as well as many of you. Mm -hmm. And, and so to get out there and tell your story and be able to motivate, that was the biggest change for me because one, when you start to get your employees, right. And your employees are starting to work with you. If you treat it transactional, like, okay, you will create a tax return. They'll create a tax return because that's a job. That's a dollar per hour job. That's a transactional right. job. But if you say, hey, we are working with entrepreneurs, not just to do tax returns. We're helping them build well. We're yes. helping them that one day when we retire, that they're going to be able to retire too. And we're helping them change their generational legacy by building that well and help others, right? Because people that, that, that start businesses hire others that they're able to give back into community, right? And especially with minorities, right? We hire yes. others that look like us and we give them opportunities they would not normally have, right? We change generations. We create yes. generational wealth. But when you can teach your team that this is why we do it. This is why we are changing lives. This is why we get up in the morning, what we do, what we do. Then you have a completely different impact. You know, it's like they that. buy in, they exactly. buy into the mission and the vision. And when you give them permission to shine in whatever position, whether they're in a, you know, they're just in a beginner's role or they're at some sort of mastery level in your business. If you're constantly giving them opportunities to shine, everybody benefits, but they have to be bought into the story of that mission and long-term vision. So that's how you pour into your people. And then they in turn pour back into the business, they pour into the clients and they are financially and personally rewarded because they feel, when you feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself. Oh my goodness. It just really fuels you getting up in the morning and, and being a high performer, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're an intrapreneur working for an entrepreneur. So that's incredibly important. Definitely. Definitely. Now, Kelly, I want to ask a question. And as we wind down, one of the things that we love to ask is if you could leave one piece of advice and it can be personal, it can be business related. If you could leave one piece of advice to our rising entrepreneurs who are getting out there and starting to scale, what would that piece of advice be? It would be this stop treating every revenue level like an arrival 
and start looking at your business growth as a journey. And the reason why this is so profoundly important is because if you treat it like an arrival mentally and emotionally, you will constantly be striving and also making really false assumptions about what's going to happen. Every I hear, oh, when I get to 100,000, it's going to be like this. When I get to a million, it'll finally be like this. When I get all my problems are going to go away. That's arrival thinking. When you think of the whole whole thing as a journey and an experience that is just rich with so many things, money included, but so many other things, then you don't get so caught up in the arrival. You can be more present in the moment. And it doesn't mean that you're not striving for next level. It just means that you can slow down enough to enjoy what's already here. Because if what's already here doesn't have something for you, I guarantee you what you get to next will not hold something for you either. I love that. That is really deep about looking at that the entire experience as a journey versus I've arrived or a point to get to my arrival, right? To be able to enjoy the journey and take a deep breath on it. That is so critical and so important because I remember, you know, um, I think when I came to you, Kelly, you know, I was asking you, I said, how do you feel happy? You know, because you get to new yes. level, new devil and you're like, Still not happy. Yeah. You know, he's so happy. That's a ride. That's the perfect, <laughs> most beautiful example of arrival thinking. And I've had many seven figure clients who have said to me, All right, I made a million. Now what? Well, I don't feel any better. I don't feel like a different person. Okay, I have more stuff, but what? I don't feel any more fulfilled. So, oh, that's a beautiful example. Well, you taught me it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sue. So guys, remember the journey. We're on a journey. We are not arriving. We, we arrive when we're, when we're six feet under. It's That's a journey. Right. <laughs> that is right. So Kelly, how can our viewers and listeners contact you to work with you? That's the best way to reach you. Oh, it's so easy. So you can find me by my name on Facebook, by my name on Instagram, or by typing in my name.com and visiting my website. I answer emails, I answer DMs, I answer voice messages. So just reach out if you'd like to talk about working together and let's see if we're a good match. And this is the best next step for you because that's what it's all about. Everyone is what is your best next step. Don't ever settle for just doing what's next. So I'm going to put Kelly's contact information in our show notes, but it's Kelly Ruta. So K-E-L-L-Y-R-U-T-A. So kellyruta.com. And I will put that in the show notes. So definitely give Kelly a call. The world's best mindset coach. Yeah, oh, You can't you. go wrong with her. So definitely give her a call. It, it is the best investment that you can make in yourself. So thank you, oh. Kelly, for joining us today. I am humbled by your compliments. Thank you so much. And thank you to the audience for listening in. I've had a great time talking with you today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge.